But Brian, a bloke who is fond to both yourself and myself, he's a very busy man. He's a three-time premiership winner. His name is Trent Robinson of the Sydney Roosters. I'm pleased to say he joins the run home with Joel and Fletch. Robbo, good afternoon. Hey, Joel. Hey, Fletch. How are you? I'm going good, Robbo. So you're back from uh, Everest. So you got the base camp. Back from... Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we went, uh, I think we got there last Wednesday or Thursday. Last Wednesday, I think it was. Uh, there was 21 of us with uh, for the Mark Hughes Foundation, uh, which was pretty special to go up there with a group of guys and uh, and get up to base camp and see Everest for the first time. It was, uh, yeah, great trip. How high are you getting to? What what? Because I know it's they've done it a, a few years ago and a lot of them got altitude sickness. How high is uh, base camp? Yeah, so base camp's about 5,350. 5,350. We got up to about 5, 550 on another um, uh, mountain as well. Um, and so from anywhere from about 2,600 and above, you can start to get altitude sickness. So um, we're pretty high for pretty long, between 4,000 and 5.5. And and, uh, but uh, everyone's safely up and back down, which was uh, good news. What sort of training did you do, Robbo? Do you have to sort of change you're not just going to the gym and just doing the rower and stuff you've got to train under the under those sort of the, the elements and the altitude yeah so there's i mean mark hughes is involved with the air locker at, uh, they've started opening up air lockers and some other um altitude places around uh the country now so yeah it's like doing that you just go and do rower bike weights all in an altitude room so you, oh. you you're in a room which is you know, 10 by 10, and they pump nitrogen in there to, to drop the oxygen level and simulate altitude. And I did that for about four months with uh, with the Sydney crew. There was, uh, yeah, a few different guys that, that, that got ready, and they did the same up at Newcastle. Robbo, I know you're tight with the Mark Hughes Foundation, but how did you get involved with this walk in particular? Did you reach out to them? Did Hughesy knock on your door? How did that play out? Well, I did Kilimanjaro with them four years ago in 2019. So I think Mark and I sort of had a chat with Danny Badiris back at the beginning of that year and said, would you be interested? And I said I would. And it was just a – it's a funny one because we obviously know Mark Hughes Foundation through the beanie for brain cancer round. Um, and just the, the effort that they go to to – they do two things, research and nurses. That's, that's where their funding goes. Mm. And if anybody knows charities, charities, you know, you might donate to a charity, but they often run at high admin fees, whereas I think the Mark Hughes Foundation is around 6%, which is extremely low. That means the money that goes to them goes to directly to research and nurses and, and makes a difference. So uh, I was lucky enough to do Kilimanjaro and then do, and it was an easy choice. I was asking them this time, uh, where's next? Um, so every year they do a big challenge and, um, having a guy like Hughes, he's a, he's a, a funny guy, charismatic guy, and it, um, yeah, it's a it's a great trip. How, oh, sorry, how much did you raise, Robert? Because I know they always they aim pretty high yep. at the Mark Hughes Foundation. Yeah, I think we were up to about five hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's really good news uh, for them. Uh, look, even just things like there isn't a cure for brain cancer. It's the most common cancer in people under 40, um, but we still don't have a cure. So uh, there was a couple of people on the trip that had lost their father or best mate or uh, to brain cancer. Uh, I lost my auntie last year. Um, so it was quite personal for us on the trip as well. Yeah, well done, Robbo. Well done on that. And uh, many good people, of course, getting behind the Mark Hughes Foundation. Uh, a lot of questions around the Roosters for 2024. Of course, a lot's happening. Uh, we, we read that... Eight players have been let go, and that's just what comes with the business. How hard was that, Robbo? And was there one player in particular where you go, oh, gee, I hate that conversation? Look, the, this, one, this one was – we were all pretty clear with the guys quite early yep. um, about who was in and who was out, and some of them were looking for other opportunities. or um, So it was pretty clean at the end of this year. Um, and we've retained – uh, you know, most of the, the main crew uh, that went there this year and obviously added in two key pieces um, in Spencer and Dom. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it was a sort of funny year. I know, Joel, you and I spoke about it at different yeah. times throughout the year. We we were, uh, 
weren't at our best for most of the year and then um, we showed some uh, good signs to pick ourselves up and, and go after it. But uh, I don't think we ever had the game to quite win it and we need to turn that around pretty quickly. Robbo, one of the uh, young fellas who in the last month or two really came on, Terrell May. Mm. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about him? Because I thought, especially against the game against Cronulla, he was he was brilliant. Um, and I, I realised that he sort of... Uh, started the year in in second grade and you just sort of did you have to give him a rev up or or something no it was look terrell came he was on a five-week training trial with north so north are the ones that picked him up a couple of years ago and he came and did train and trial but Mm. they signed him as a 130 kilo prop and he turned up to pre-season with them and he was 105 wow he had a bit of a a, a change in mentality throughout that preseason and and how he wanted to train and and play. His brothers had all played first grade, um, Taylor at, at, at Penrith, obviously, um, and he just made a decision. And then we thought, oh, this guy is a bit better than what we thought. Uh, played some games, and again this year felt like he was just a little bit off. And I probably played some guys that were more senior, um, and then he just played his way back in. And I think those last three games, Fletch, he played the, the second half against Melbourne, Cronulla and Souths. He played the last 40 minutes. He played, obviously, before half time, And then he nailed the last 40 um, for us. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a late bloomer, obviously, but from good stock. And, uh, yeah, he's going to play a lot more first grade. The biggest rooster bloomer, another front rower. And, Robbo, I know you've been a big rap on this bloke for some time, but without doubt, 2023 has been his year. Lindsay Collins, did you know coming into this year there was something different about him? It was going to be his time to shine? Yeah, I mean, Lindsay's been coming on for a long time. And we, uh, yeah, we had a good chat at the end of last year and challenged him a bit. Um, and he's one of our leaders in our crew. And he he made some decisions like he um, uh, about the way he wanted to live his life. And it just transformed onto the field. It doesn't always do that. Um, but he was by far our best player this year. Rob, round I'm, one, right through. Rob, to... Trent, let's not talk about. I, yeah. I need to find out. Okay. When you say go. he's changed, get, get ready, Robbo. So, when, you, uh... is he gone a little bit? Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, alternate, sort of alternate medicines. Are you uh, are you going down? He hasn't got. Are you talking about avocado? There? No, no. <laughs> way, be, way be, before be that. that. Way before that. The sun. Uh, you know, the vitamin D around the uh, the blurter region. That's what I heard. He's part of the sun. Right. The sun. Yeah. He's a big fan of vitamin right. D. The infrared. Um, <laughs> I can't confirm that. Yeah. I have not been okay. close to the uh, close to the uh, the training in that manner. Um, I know he's uh, – they, they made a good laugh about him doing things with uh, um, avocado yes. seeds, yes. which yes. Rad's made up. <laughs> made um, up. <laughs> he did make that up. It's, uh, and people have seriously asked um, Lindsay whether he does um, eat them from the other end. Yeah. Uh, but he, 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 uh, he, uh, he has changed his diet a lot. He, uh, he hasn't drunk all year. Um and he's by far our best uh, recover, uh, uh, injury uh, treatment plans, all of that sort of stuff. He's uh, He is a freak. He loves a good time. He's got a tattoo of a beer on his ankle. Mm. So it's not as if he's uh, um, has always been off it. But he decided to become one of the best players in the game this year. And that's what he's, he's done. He did it for us. Uh, he did it for Queensland, and he's in the middle of doing it for, for Australia as well off the bench. I might take that up in 2024, Brian. Instead of getting on the phone after a few and texting uh, Robbo with a few answers, yes. I might just get the <laughs> avocado soon. I know, and it's not cheap. They're not That's cheap. Right. They're quite expensive, yeah. the avocados. <laughs> hey, Robbo, have you thought about the first time? I mean, Spencer Lenu's coming over next year when him and Jared had that uh, infamous uh, set to yeah. at the uh, at Allianz. Are you going to – are we going to sort of – the first time on the drink, are we going to bring it up or what are we going to do there? Are they going to well, shake I hands I mean, or this fight? Is, this is the uh, – this, this is the. I mean, coaches don't need to get in the middle of that. Players sort that stuff out. Mm. Um, they, they sort that out between them. They're both men. They'll have the conversation they need to and then they'll, they'll get on with it. You know, it's like the – 
you know, school school teachers don't fix those problems. Okay. The, the, the players need to look after it, and uh, I'm looking forward to it as well because um, I like what they both bring. Jared's been our, our leader for a long time, so, um, yeah. I can't wait for that. Looking, Spencer, yeah. fright, Spencer frightens me from the from the <laughs> the comfort of the lounge room. Just those eyes. Yeah. He's a good player. He's a, he's a great pickup, Robert. Have you was that? Yeah. So when you go out to market, as I yep. know, you got the recruit the recruiting guys and yourself. What was it about Spencer Lenu that you thought would be an asset to the Chooks? Well, there was a. I mean, look at what we have. We look at Jared and Lindsay. We have got Lindsay, who's becoming you know, the, the lead prop in our club and, and Jared's still the, you know, the, the spiritual leader, but Lindsay was taking that over as Jared was finishing. Um, so what we needed was someone to come on and take some of Jared's traits, but, but learn to become a starting player and come through. And Spencer was ideal for that. We've got that lead prop in a, you know, we've got Jared again, but in 2025, Lindsay is that real lead prop, but we've also got a firebrand, a, a powerful runner. And so we looked for a younger version uh, in a similar style as Jared with power and, mm. and Spencer was perfect. It was like the ideal mix between Lindsay taking over and Spencer coming through. That's the key, Brian. I think that was the thing we learned this year with the two grand finalists, power. Mm. Powerful. Leg speed. Leg speed. Leg speed's a buzzword. What's another buzzword, Robbo, we start looking for in rugby league for 2024? Give us a insight and some buzzwords that you think is going to be... Execution. Execution. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. I, I, um, I'm not a fan of middle third. No. Why can't we just say the middle, the... Trent? <laughs> Why do we have to say the we, middle uh, third? Well, this is what... Yeah, I don't... I, I've never used middle third, good. but... Thank you. I know you wouldn't. If they... If they uh, and that's what happens is that we, we end up listening to commentators and um, mm. as soon as we prime them with a couple of words and then everybody, um, you know, they've got a responsibility to to vary our vocab on footy a bit. Yeah, um, we've got to also, so, we've got to get rid of the spine. I'm not a fan of the spine. The spine. Why can't we just say the yeah. playmakers like yeah. the old days? Well, there's fewer syllables in spine. Yeah. I know, but... It's, Spine people from who are sitting at home, they're going, What's the spine mean? Hey, Rob, I want to ask you this, uh, which I've never even asked you this personally, but um, three times yep. you won the competition. I, I want to understand the style of coach you are, as far as are you personally wanting to look at every single video or are you entrusting it upon someone else to do that? How I suppose I'm asking many ways, are you a control freak when it comes to that stuff, or you're quite you're, you're more focused on getting the right people around you? Yeah, I think uh, without sort of – like, I think I'm a, a bit of both. I like to I like to be detailed on – I like to get that done early with coaches yep. um, and with the players and, and really set up our system and, and what I expect in videos and the way that we present and train and all of that. And then uh, by halfway through on back end of season, I don't, I don't know what the, some of the coaches are going to present until I'm in the meeting. That's the way that I think, and that gives builds autonomy with the coach and builds their own personality the longer they go. But I also like to have it in a certain style to begin the year. Um, and to like, I'm in the middle of teaching, obviously, Boyd Cordner is yep. coming on as a coach with us. So I spend a lot of time with Boyd um, developing his coaching techniques because he's got the charisma and he's got all that, but learning how to coach is different. But then by halfway through the year, I won't even ask him what he's presenting. I'll just expect him to um, to deliver what we've gone through over the course of the first few months. Now, Trent, uh, are you aware that the Dragons have come out and offered Joey Manu $1.2 million over four years? Is he aware? Are you, I'm just wondering. <laughs> you've been away. I'm just wondering, are, are you aware? I, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've seen the... Um, okay. I've seen the the commentary around it. So, right. how do we combat that? What happens now? Do we start having uh, conversations with oh, his look, manager? I, feel, I think the first thing is I feel like they well, the conversations with his manager have been ongoing, and we're pretty comfortable with where they're at. You know, Joey's a rooster. I don't expect him to go anywhere. No, I agree. Um, I feel like um, they're they I mean, Flano's really trying to rebuild. Um, the Dragons, and, and that's that's really their prerogative. But I feel like they've thrown that out there to, you know, 
to get in touch with the manager. I don't think those discussions have been had at all. No. All right, that's exactly what I said, Trent. And your mate's in here thinking, no, he'll go. He won't go. <laughs> well, uh, well, you know what I did say, Brian? You haven't quoted me on this. I actually think if anyone, and I'm not saying this would happen, if anyone in rugby league could take up a job such as the Wallabies, I reckon the man we're speaking to would be the Ooh, number one candidate. Now, I know that's not going to happen in the near future because you're committed to the tricolours. But is that something – like, are you coaching at the Roosters for 100 years? Because I'm sure they'd have you for 100 years, Robbo. Or do you have your plans way down the track on doing something different? Running the game, Rumor coaching Wednesday. the Wallabies. Rumour Wednesday. Rumour Wednesday. Oh, Robbo. Yes. How, how did we go from Joey yeah, Manu to coaching the This is what we do here. Rumour Wednesday. This is what happens when we hit, we lack concentration. <laughs> we just jump, I just jump from one thing to another. And I've, pa- I've passed it on to Sugar, unfortunately. Good question, though. I, uh, no, I, look. I don't have. I hate long-term planning. Even yep. though I'm at the Roosters, I like not knowing what's tomorrow. Yep. So I, I'll. This will be the biggest job of my life. Will be at the Roosters. You know, I'm here for another, you know, five years. Um. Obviously, I'm not going to be here forever and ever. You know, but I will be here for as long as I need to. I need to win more comps, and then. Um, you know, I don't know what's next. I honestly have no idea, but I mean, I'd love to travel. I'd love to take on new challenges, but it won't be for a while. Mm. Do you think Czech, I mean, he was interested in coaching yeah. league. Do you think one day down the track he would make a good league coach, Michael Checker? Well, I think he could, you know, like, I think, you know, what they've shown is they can jump between all these really good coaches and, and still not get a result. I think Czech could coach the Wallabies tomorrow. Yeah. That's what I think. You know, his ability to go and take Argentina to the semis, um, all the success he's had, he knows how to coach. Um, so I think he could coach the Wallabies and also seeing him coach with Lebanon. Um, you know, there's no different in us changing over. The man's management doesn't change between codes. It's the technical detail and check has got enough. He grew up playing it. I think he played SG ball um, uh, for Roosters. Um Check. He played, you know, he loves watching it. Um, mm. He could do what he want. And he's bold enough to do, um, to, to change. You know, he's, he's really confident in his own ability. Um, you know, and as we say, he's got balls. He mm. can, he could, he could change and do whatever job he wants to do. Uh, this one, a quick one here on the text line saying that obviously we'd have many uh, listeners who are coaching in whatever level it is. Is there any, Sort of one piece of advice, which wouldn't be obvious to many people that you'd pass on to a, a coach coaching at any level, Robbo. I, look, I see it. I'm just outside uh, Queen's Park. We're about to go down to watch some Oz tag. Yep. Um, and I, the biggest thing I think is most people love the game, right? All coaches love the game. They love watching Friday night. And, and then they, they don't plan enough. They get out there and they, they get, you know, 11 aside or... Yep. Um, 13 aside and just try and do attack and defense. They don't plan enough. I really have not really clear and they don't play enough games. They, they want to get their structures right from a really early age is what I've seen, but plan training, do lots of skills, do lots of games um, uh, and create time from it through planning. Beautiful. Well said, mate. Uh, all the best for, 2024, and a real quick one because we've got to go, but uh, if there's a book that we need to read, I know you're well read for the listeners, what would you suggest, something you've read recently? Uh, we took it, I actually got, gave it to the Roosters this year, really simple book, most people may have, um, and I read it on the uh, Mark Hughes Foundation up to Everest, uh, lesson each day, make your bed, pretty good lesson for anybody from eight or nine years old through to 100, so make your bed, written by a Navy SEAL. Beautiful. Robbo, thanks for joining the run over with Joel and Fletch. Uh, Hope to talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, mate.